What's up everybody and welcome to your next SML 2.0 tutorial and this tutorial we're going to be learning about uh, playing sounds. Now before we begin this tutorial what we want to do is go to our project properties and our, link, our linker settings and what we want to do is add the audio uh, library. Uh, if you're using MinGW order does matter so uh, since uh, you have to since the way the order works with SML and um, NGW is that the rule of thumb is that if the bottom one, if the if the bottom, if the top one relies on the bottom, then you put it above. So the window relies on the system, so you put window above system. Graphics relies on the window, so on and so forth. So if you're using MinGW with like code blocks, that does matter. I don't think it really matters much for Visual Studio, but I do it just to uh, make sure. Also, you're going to need to include uh, audio.hpp when we're going to use it. So first, we're going to be uh, looking at sounds. And what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, SF sound buffer. And we're going to uh, call the sound buffer. And we're going to put SF sound and name this sound. Now, before I even continue, if we look at the SML website, these are the sound formats that it supports. Note that it doesn't support MP3, which is a common sound format. Uh, so if you ever need to convert your files, you can go to convertfiles.com. The reason why it doesn't support MP3 is because uh, you have to play royalties for that. Uh, and uh, they don't want to do that. Or the creator of SML doesn't want to do that. Uh, so generally... What I would do for sound effects, I would normally make them WAV files since they're uncompressed. And for music files, uh, for music files are like background music or something that's going to play for a long time, uh, then I would make it an AUG file since it's compressed, right? And therefore, you don't want to use a, too much data or stuff, so you're, you're going to want to compress file format for that. So anyways, we create a sound buffer and sound. Well, this works the exact same way as uh, sprite w as what textures work with sprites. So first, we have to load in the sound buffer. So we're gonna say, if not sound buffer, load from file, and my sound is called beep dot wave. Now, where to store the file? You store it in the same directory where you stored the fonts and your images. So the same uh, where your like your CPP files and everything is in. Okay. So I'm loading that in. If we can't find it, then we're gonna say uh, can't find beep dot wave or something like that. So if it does find it, then we're gonna say sound dot set buffer, and we're gonna put our sound buffer in there. Simple enough. Now in order to play a sound, all we have to do is call sound dot play. So in our event loop, I'm gonna say uh, if event key code, and if they press the P keyboard. And they click the P key. Sorry, we're gonna make a call to sound dot play. Now I'm going to play this right now, and I don't even know if you will be able to hear it. I hope you can. Uh, but let's see. I'm gonna press it right now. Okay, so I played it a few times, and and it, it plays it accordingly. You can also make a uh call to sound dot uh dot pause or sound dot stop. You call sound out pause and you click sound out play it will resume from where you started off or where you left off so uh, some other sound properties we can look at is sound out set pitch so the lower the pitch or uh, the default pitch is one so the lower the value the duller the pitch is so if I put uh, 0 0.5 and I try to play this hopefully you guys can hear this I hope you guys can but the sound sounds dull, sounds dull, and the higher I put it, it's a more high pitch uh, sound, as you guys can hopefully hear. So, uh, so we can do that with sound, and we can also set the volume of the sound. Now, by default, it's set to max volume, and uh, it ranges from zero to a hundred. So, a hundred means max volume, zero means mute. So if we want to do half the volume, we can do that. And it will play it at half the volume. Okay. Uh, so now that we, now that, and just to show you, uh, if I put zero, it's going to be mute. 
as you can see it, we don't hear any sound at all so if you have like a options uh, in your game and you want them to be able to uh, alter the background music or the sound effects then you can do that as well so uh, there's a lot of other sound stuff so if we look at sound and we say like set and there's a bunch of stuff but mainly these are meant for like 3d space and and stuff like that so we're not going to get too in-depth with that but last but not least we're going to look into loop so if we want to set loop we can set sound.loop to true and if we set it to true then when we play it it's going to keep looping as you might be able to hear or might not be able to hear i hope you can hear it but yeah maybe if i turn my computer volume up But yeah, so it, it will keep looping. So that's for sound effects. And sounds are meant for like small files or small sound effects like battle sounds, grunts, or attacks, something like that. Something that's not going to play for long. Now, if you need something that needs to play for longer, say 30 seconds, a minute, three minutes, an hour, whatever. Make, say you're making an MP3 player or something, or something you want it to play for a long time. This is a job for SF Music and let's call this music now it doesn't require two different parts like the sound buffer but met the music class does stuff differently so if we say music it, it has no load from file as we can see it has open from file now the reason why it says open from file is because it doesn't actually load it into memory it streams it so uh music can be relatively large right and because it can be relatively large, we don't want to load um, all of it at once. So we only stream and we load into what we're actually using in the moment. So my uh, what I'm loading in is called hero.org. Uh, so it's an org file. And if not music, and then you can put, we can put can't find hero dot odd and this uh what i'm about to play is uh something made by my brother he does music production if you ever need music for your games or something and you're really serious you can go and, and contact him he can he makes some really cool game music this isn't game music that i am playing right now but uh i just needed something for the video and i got permission from him okay so uh, instead of saying the sound dot play, we're gonna say music dot play right now, and let's play this music when we press P. So hopefully you can hear this. Oh, so it says it cannot find fill open file uh support file format, but file is malformed, so it can't find it. Uh, so it's having trouble finding my file. So let me let me check to see what the problem is. So I figured out the problem, and I I can't believe I forgot to show this. Uh, but if we go, I just downloaded the SFML 2.0 snapshot, and uh, just to quickly to get the files. And what you should do is go to ex extended libraries. Uh, go to bin. And depending on your, if you're 64 bit or 32 bit, then you'll choose this one. Uh, 32 bit for this, 64 bit for this. For some reason, the the 64 bit won't work for me, and sometimes it doesn't work with other people. Uh, so I would choose a 32 bit because it can work on both systems, right? And uh, if you're gonna redistribute it to a 32 bit computer, uh, it, it's it's better for you. You can you have a wider audience. But anyways, you can you copy these files. And you see your project folder where your actual application is, your exe file. So for me in Visual Studio, it will be the, my project folder. I click debug, and then there, that's where my exe file is. Then I'll, you'll paste the two files in there. In code blocks, it might be uh, in a different folder, but you have to find your exe file of your program, paste the two files in there, and the music should work uh, correctly. Okay. Uh, so now, uh, it, it there's no problems with loading. So I'm gonna press P, and I'm gonna play it for a bit. I don't know if you guys can hear that.
so that's just uh that's just a little bit of that's just like the intro of a song a beat that my brother made or some music that my brother made so if you guys ever need game music or something just let him know he can do any any genre of music you want it doesn't have to be game music it can be any type uh, but yeah, you guys can check him out. If you guys want information, you can leave the comments below. You can inbox me, whatever you want. But that is it uh, for the music tutorial. Uh, and with, well, just to uh, show you something uh, quickly. Uh, the music is just like the sound, so we can set the pitch and, and so on and so forth. But one thing that I never showed you yet is, uh, is set playing offset, which is with the sounds too. Uh, but with the set, uh, the the offset, you can set the time when uh, uh when it should start playing. So you can set it to start at like t uh, uh two seconds, uh so on and so forth, right? Well, sorry, it's an SF time instance. But you can set it to start at say like two seconds, set it at to start at five milliseconds or something. So it will start at the position that you set it to start at. Um, so that is it for the tutorial. I would show you it in action, but uh, because it's really late, I don't really want to wake anybody up with the music. So I'm not going to do it. I'm going to leave that to you guys to try it out. So that's it for the tutorial. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And